We are in a state of emergency. Prejudice. Wrote a song about it? Like to hear it? Here it go. Free your mind. Message. Hey, my brother, you know I had to call you and thank you personally again. I cannot describe to you how happy I was to meet you in person, by the way. That was just like amazing. Himself, and you don't realize it. You don't realize it that God has been in prison. The devil was able to imprison God. So right inside your own self, your God self has been in prison, and you have a false sense of self running rampant inside the temple. This is why you understand what I'm saying. You, yes, sir. you have to bring reality's temple here on earth. Reality's <laughs> temple here on earth. Because yes, sir. We have to realize the enemy is running rampant inside this temple and we have to recover. All the things on paper that say, if you do this, we're going to punish you by incarcerating you and you break them and you're dumb enough to get caught, then you're just dumb. All right, all right. Shout out to Reality's Temple in the building. Well, just from us, I got to get him on here, man. You talk about somebody polarizing. Whoa. <laughs> that brother, that brother is a. Uh... <laughs> I'll leave that alone. Shout out to the brother, though, Justin. Ellis becomes the first of the divas to offer the world her singular sound. And she does just that on Southern Gap.
Peace for everyone and always. I'm so sister J. I'm so sister D. And I just wanted to say thank you for all the people who helped to the medical fundraiser for my uncle Tariq. And it has been so much to us that you would help because without you guys, his life would not be possible and we would not be with him today right now. And I just wanted to say for all of you that helped and that donated, I would really would like to give a big thanks. And I hope I can meet you one day and say thank you in person. I love you guys and much. I trust that feeling. Does anybody have any questions of me before I get out of here? Let's see what you guys are saying. What's up, Soul Sister Rona? Hey, Talik. I'm the brother that did my uh, Mike Jackson in Tunica, Mississippi. Hey, now. Uh, hello to Terry. Respect. Bless up. Bless up. Bless up. Come on now. Everybody who is black and interested in black people, let us sit down and find out how we can get together in one direction against one enemy and accomplish this job overnight. In the year 2019, black folks continue to go through the change rather than direct the change. A community activist named Talik Ibn Rod has made an appeal similar to what Sam Cooke was asking for a change. It's said that the meek shall inherit the earth. We ask when. When will the landlords give the meek a free lease? Mr. Ebenrod is humbly asking for the state of Mississippi. This is Dusty Basement Studios, and we approve of this message. And that is uh, Brother Talik from the Reality Temples on Earth channel. And if you get a chance uh, to subscribe, please do, please do subscribe to his channel. He's a he's a good brother. You know, he's trying to he's doing good work, and he wants to do good constructive things he has good information to provide so please do check out his channel if you get a chance welcome to the reality temple on earth my name is Jeroen and uh, I would like to say that Angel Snub Snub Seven isn't a racist at all he's a good friend but you um, a lot of your video content to me was very informative you know the things you talked about had substance man and um you and i first really knew about you because of jt rally one real nigga news and <laughs> and um <laughs> you and him got into a conflict with each other and um when i did my website you were the only brother and let me stress that because when I did that website, blackcommune.net, and I did the video and I asked the black YouTube community, the so-called black YouTube community, to give me your videos. Because at the time, a lot of brothers were getting flagged and videos taken down. So I said, you know what, you can put your videos on my website so that the message can still be heard for all to hear you know something like you know a little web I, I, I made that website for everyone but you were the only one that gave me permission to use your videos and I thought that was very honorable of you 
and really a testament to how much you cared about the black community. What dear? Cause I keeps it real like that. I keeps it real. I gotta wake up. Uh, now, you know, when I begin a video this way, it's something that grinds my gears. Woo! Who, who am I? Who is doing this gear grinding? I'm Angel Snubbed Up 7, and welcome once again to another very short and quick version of what I call the Realities Temple on Earth Internet Ministry. I'm Angel Snub Number Seven, the Mighty One. I'm also your soul brother, Number One, and this is Invo. <laughs> Love those ladies. Now check this out. This grinds my gears. Okay, I notice this is a subject. These pro-black, blackity black, first black, comedic, whatever they want to call themselves, Afrocentric. Uh, more Hebrew, whatever they want to call themselves. This is a subject they don't want to debate. You don't see them messing with this at all because they do it. Because they're guilty of it and there's no way to justify it except you just nasty. <laughs> you just disgusting. That's just, that's just the bottom line of it. I posted I posted on Facebook a video to continue to tell people, because a lot of y'all don't even know, that oral sex or anal sex is not sex at all. It is called sodomy. Then many of you are Bible thumpers. Many of you are Quran thumpers. Y'all believe in the Quran. And and you believe in the Bible, and you are and and you are anti-homosexual. Uh, you against the gay agenda. You 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 just gun hole over the homosexuals. But but y'all doing the same thing in your bedroom. Y'all doing a little y'all doing a little of the sucky suck and the licky lick and drinking urine and and eating feces just like. The people that you talk about doing the same thing. Well, we can do that because it's between a man and a woman. PP is PP, people. 
doo doo is doo doo. I never went into one of these old project buildings and smelt the piss and said, huh, that smell like homosexual pee. Huh, that smell like heterosexual pee, heterosexual pee. This this smell like, uh, that look like transgender doo doo on the wall. Nobody can doo doo is doo doo. Pee pee is pee pee, and and y'all seeking pleasure in the in the boo boo, playing around in the doo doo. The only sex is sexual intercourse when the penis intercourse with the vagina. That's sex. The vagina is a sexual organ. The penis is a sexual organ. The mouth, the anus, your hands is not sexual organs. Oh, okay, people. <laughs> you need to go check out, you need to go back to kindergarten and learn your basic biology. It's sad on me. So this brother going to reply to me back and tell me I don't have a, a real understanding. I, what kind of understanding do I need to understand boo-boo? You see that in baby, baby diapers and pee-pee. That's in baby diapers. And y'all might as well, and, and, and female animals do it. They actually lick, they actually lick the pee-pee and the doo-doo of their puppies or whatever animal that they have. They actually lick that out. They lick that up. Cleaning, that's the only way they know how to clean their puppy, their little baby up. Animals. You might as well do the same thing because that's what y'all doing. Seeking pleasure in the boo-boo. And brown stains all on your nose and 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 and, and that urine acid all <laughs> Woo! and y'all say y'all say that make you feel good. I wonder y'all stay in the bathroom a long time. And you do know that you can some people try to get high. You can get high off of doo-doo and pee-pee. Just just fill your toilet with doo-doo and pee-pee. And then just sniff that stuff up. Some folks, don't you know you can get high? That's a cheap way of getting high. It stinks, but you can get high doing that. Didn't you know that? Look it up. Do your research. Get the information. Talk to your scholars. <laughs> Look. See, back in the day when I was growing up, when people, people used to tell you, suck my dick. Suck my vagina sometimes. Okay, suck my, you know, whatever. I don't want to get too nasty, but parental discretion is advised. Suck my dick, okay? That, that, that did not mean that person wanted to love you. That person is not trying to seek sexual pleasure from you. When they tell you, suck my dick, suck my vagina, or kiss my ass, and stuff like that, that's to humiliate you, to degrade you. To make you feel less than who you are. That's what it was for. Because anybody with any type of sense. They know that it's nasty. And it's a disgusting thing to force somebody. To, to, to suck your, your uh, organs. Where you eliminate your waste. Put you in the doo-doo. Put you in the pee-pee. That's humiliating. But see, y'all was taught, and many of you grew up on uh, porn movies, and the first porn movies was Caucasian white folks, and that's who, you, that's where you learn all this stuff from with your pro-black, blackly black self. You know about those Caucasian porn stars and those porn magazines, Playboy, Penthouse, and some of those real hardcore. Y'all know about that kind of stuff. You learn, you learn, and then they teach you. In school, that oral sex and, and anal sex, they teach you that it's sex, but because they know that you're not going to really do a little simple research because it's not sex, it's called sodomy, people. That's, the, that's something that your God is supposed to be very, very angry about. And it really makes no difference whether it's between man or man, woman or woman. Or man or and woman makes no difference. You're still playing with that boo-boo and getting the doo-doo 
in your mouth. Mmm. That's not chocolate candy. That's not a Hershey bar. That's doo doo. And it's got to stink. I don't care how much you wipe. I don't care how many showers you take or whatever. The pee pee's always going to be there. Your body is constantly producing urine and feces constantly. You constantly farting, stanking, and you know that when y'all having y'all sex and you and your side of me, you know, you all in your in the booty and your and your partner farting your fat. Oh my gosh, you know. You're supposed to try to get all that extra gas out your body. So when you're licking the chicken, it's finger licking good. <laughs> Woo! It goes back. To slavery. When our people, our ancestors, didn't have a choice. They were being raped by racists. And it was the purpose, as a matter of control, to keep you humiliated, to keep you degraded. So they would take a strong brother. And they would they would force him on his back. Spread his cheeks and a man, one of the Peckerwood men, would place his penis in his anus. This big strong man called Buck Breaking. Not a, not a, it's not a sign of love. It's not a sign of love. See, I love Terry. I love Cindy. And I love Rona. Love involved. So it would be a sign of love. Well, it's not going to be a sign of love. I don't, I'm not, I don't. I don't commit sodomy like y'all do. That's sodomy. Rape. So, if that was reported as a crime, they would say, well, that person had sex with him. But the official police report would say, this person was sodomized. Putting a penis in your mouth is sodomy. Making somebody lick your vagina is sodomy. It's sodomy. You got sodomized. Most children, you know their sex organs don't can barely work or whatever. So you lick the child, these pedophiles lick these children or make the children suck their phallus. It's called sodomy. Three or four counts of sodomy. It's, they don't say sex. The common people say sex, but to be technical, in a police report, they call it for what it is. Sodomy. It's called sodomy. And the reason why we practice sodomy, do your research, get your information, talk to the scholars. They will tell you it's because we were raped for over 300 years. And you began to take, to see and practice this, this abuse yourself. So you have women who have been called hoes and bitches for I don't know how long. So these women now. Being abused. By men all this time. Now they call themselves. With a smile on their face. They call themselves a hoe. They call themselves a bitch. They began to embrace. The abuse. They began to. Embrace. The oppression. Here you are. In 2019. And you do the same thing. You embrace the sodomy. You embrace the rape that was forced on us by your oppressor. And you said, it makes me feel good. It made me, ha, it made me feel good. Uh, I got to jump back, kick myself. Hey, sodomy show good. <laughs> no. So here you are. A buck. You a buck that has been broken. Over 300 years, and now you do it yourself, and you broke and you bug break your woman. And see, for the longest, soul sisters, for the longest, black women, black women wouldn't enter that. They said it's nasty. So y'all, so y'all, these these black men had to go out in the street and find these white prostitutes that would do that for them. Because black women wouldn't do it. And as many sisters ain't going to get into that. Because there's something wrong with it. They know something wrong with it. 
That's sodomy. That's not sex. That's not making love. That's sodomy. That's not sexual intercourse. But now, of course, because of the media, because of the education our people are getting, now it's becoming more acceptable by the black women, and there they go. Sodomy. That's what it is. Why are you a sodomite? Because you was raped. Because you were sodomized for over 300 years. Because even as a Christian, see, the slave master gave our ancestors Christianity. So we know they was against it. Just in recent times, you begin to accept this. Because when I was growing up, that was a nasty thing to do. If you was doing that, you kept it to yourself. You didn't. You did not come out in the public, in the community, and brag about you suck somebody's dick, you was licking somebody's booty, and 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 and, and sucking on somebody's poop, uh, 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 vagina. You kept that to yourself. But now, you've been so brainwashed. You've been tricked. You've been bamboozled to make something because something. Filthy and disgusting and nasty and vile and vulgar. Now you see, you find that abuse is pleasurable. Just like you have some of these clowns talk about it's a part of the sex game. Talk about beat them with a whip. All that kind of nonsense. You've been tricked. Now you're calling yourself nigger. Because you've embraced the abuse. And that's what it's all about. Don't believe me? Jot down your comments. Let's talk about it. Till next time, y'all. Um, hey. Don't believe the hype. In the name of my ancestors, peace forever and always, and welcome to another edition of the Realities Tip on Earth Internet Ministry. Of course, I'm the host of this particular program, known here on the internet as the mighty, mighty, mighty mm. Angel Snub Nub Seven. I am your brother. And hopefully your friend, Tali Even Ra. The subject that I've chosen for these very few minutes, I have chosen the topic of or being in defense of those who have chosen to be involved in a sex, sexless marriage. I want to say something about this, uh, this old saying that we have been taught. And that is when men and women come together and involve themselves in sexual intercourse, we are told that the man and the woman becomes one. Now, the problem with this is it is called, or the act is called, sexual intercourse that means one object intercourse with another object separately they do not become one they do not be, they do not join it is a temporary 
thing. So if I'm separate and you're separate, how can we become one? And if we become one, they say, well, it's spiritual. It's in the mind. Then you explain the high divorce rate. Then you explain why men beat women. If we are one, why would I want to beat myself? Why would I want to make mockery of myself? Why would I want to why would I why would I want to make myself an unequal? Why would I want to make myself something more inferior than what I am? But that's what men do to women. So how can they be one with all the sexual intercourse going on and the man and the woman are becoming one? It does not make any sense. We are separate life forms. And after the sexual intercourse, I am me. She is who she is. We are separate individuals. We intercourse. We intercourse so that the human being can reproduce. We intercourse so we can make a family, a town, a city, or a neighborhood because that's how or what we use to survive. But we are all individuals. When it's all said and done, even if you are a twin, you are in the womb at the same time with your sibling. You may look the same, but your twin is separate. You're not, on, you're not even on the same umbilical cord. We are separate beings. And then sooner or later, we go into separate coffins, separate caskets. You go your way, I go my way. We are never unified like that. There is no oneness. Oneness is to fuse into something. It's called fusion. I have this hand. I have that hand. I put them together, they intercourse to form a cloud. However, if they become one, somehow they fuse together into one hand. Now they are one. They are one being. So this stuff that we're taught just don't make any sense when you think about it. Another thing that does not make sense is why is there shame? Why is there mockery when people tell you I am in a sexless marriage? What is wrong with a sexless marriage? <clears throat> what I very much hate and despise, I cannot stand when people take their religious influence beliefs and because most times it's religious based. <clears throat> but whatever, political beliefs, however, but they take their beliefs that's not based in nature and you try to force that on other people. You try to shame people that are involved in a sexless marriage. You try to make mockery of them because they are in a sexless marriage. Why should they be shamed? There are many people who can love another human being, but they don't have to be physical with them. They don't want children. I'm a man. I just, I just don't have that. I don't. I don't have that connection with my wife and my wife feels the same for me, but we love each other. What's wrong with that? But in this society, in this civilization, you are looked upon as some kind of freak. You're unnatural. This is a choice. Why I can't make this choice in my life? This is what I want to do. Just like you do what you want to do. Well, 
you always talking about it's unnatural. It's unnatural for a man not to want to have sex with his wife and a wife don't want to have sex with the is it really? There are enough of you who can continue the human race. There are no signs that this behavior is threatening the life of the human race. Matter of fact, you really need to stop at the rate that you're going because you don't have the resources. And actually, your behavior is unnatural because even in the animal kingdom, most times you see animals, they only breed when they have the right resources. If the, if the resources are not available, <coughs> excuse me, if the resources are not available, they produce less offspring or they don't breed at all. If the conditions are not favorable. But you. Since we have been made. Something like a slave. We are expected to breed. No matter what. When we are young. And you have hormones racing. Of, of, you know. That can cause you. To seek sexual favor. A man wants sexual favor from his woman and the woman from the man and so forth, whatever. And then from out of that intercourse comes children. And then you work your job and you have to deal with the children and whatever. And for many people, they've been there, done that. They don't care nothing about that sex stuff no more. I have my children. I'm working my job. Now it's time to develop and raise my family. I don't need that really no more. I don't, I don't even have that desire no more. Because I'm maturing in my life. And I'm not nobody's slave. I'm not breeding for you. I'm doing what's best for me. But those who are caught up in the slave-like condition. And they are listening to the filthy songs on the radio and the, and the corrupt education that they're getting in textbooks and what you see on media, then they are under the control of a slave master they cannot even see. And you're breeding not for your benefit, but the benefit of somebody else. How do your children benefit you? How do your sexual behavior benefit you? It does not. The only thing that you do is make the people that make condoms rich. The one who makes the birth control pills rich. That's all that you're doing. And that's what it's all about. In American society, I even saw a Caucasian man say, if you really want to know about America, Follow the money. So anything that you're involved in, sit back down, think about it, and follow the money. Why do they want me to act this way? Why do they want me to do this? Follow the money. It's all about the money. It's not about you. Running around here, a porn fiend, sex addict, seeking pleasure for what? Animals don't have sex for pleasure. It's serious business. It's not games. And that's why you, the human being, regardless to your race, that's why you messed up all over the planet. Because you think and you have been made to view sexual intercourse as some kind of game. Why are you not playing the game? How come you in a marriage and not having sex? <clears throat> Breeding stock, they want you to become a mindless machine. In nature, among long-living animals, and the human being is considered a mammal, a long-living animal. That's why you can only produce one baby at a time, once a year. 
In fact, you shouldn't even be doing it once a year. A woman should be given a break in having babies so that her body can properly heal and have her child a baby once every two or three years. But your breeding stock. So let's have babies back to back. But long living animals are not interested and you don't see in nature them acting and behaving the way that you do. You see the sample of the sexless marriage all the time. However, in short lived animals like rabbits and mice, you see them breeding all the time. But that's because they are on the uh, dinner menu of many animals and their mortality, mortality rate is very, very high. So in order to keep their numbers at a sufficient level, they must breed and breed and breed because many of them will be eaten. Many of them will be killed. This is not the case in long living animals. However, you've been, you've been turned into a rabbit. You've been turned into mice. But now the slave master finds that he has too many. And if you really look at your environment, they are trying to find ways to get rid of some of you. But yet and still, they must keep this mentality going to keep you docile, keep, keep you in somebody's panties, keep you in somebody's drawers so that they can continue to exploit you. Of course, they will be speaking against the sexless marriage because when you don't have that crap on your mind like that, obsessed with this, that foolishness, it's become foolishness and a sickness, then your mind begins to open up to the reality of your enslavement and this they cannot have. So keep having your sex. Keep getting drunk. Keep getting high. Keep being a slave regardless to your skin color. Enjoy yourself and have a happy slave new year like you've been having for the last few thousand years. Thank you for listening. Jot down your comments. Let's talk about it. This was and is. volunteer to take this old bird out of her misery. Cletus! Don't you dare say something like that about Mom. Oh, no, oh, you ain't got to protect me from Cletus. Come on, Cletus. Come on. Come on over here. Come on in here. Let's show up. Come on. It's your birthday. You should know just keep it going. Oh, man. Okay. <clears throat> got to set this up, as y'all know. So let's let's do this. Let's set this up. Come on. Set this up as y'all know. All right, here we go. So let's da 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 da. All right. Here we go. Okay. <clears throat> that didn't take long. So let me let me get this party started. Hmm. In the name of my ancestors, peace forever and always, and welcome to another edition of what I call the Realities Temple on Earth Internet Ministry. Of course, I am the gatekeeper or the host of this program, known here on the social media, wherever you may find me, I am known as the mighty, 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 mm, angel snub nub seven. I am your soul brother, number one. Well, we have a hmm, very interesting topic tonight. 
And I am so fatigued, but I wanted to do this topic. And uh, I hope that I can pull it off. I'm very sure I can, because once I get started, even though I'm fatigued, I usually can get on a roll and I can take care of business. But the topic that we've chosen for tonight is do women really enjoy sex? Hmm. Well, interesting question. Before I continue, as you probably would guess, parental discretion is advised. However, I would hope that you would sit down with discretion and bring this topic to our children, our young boys and our young girls, so they can see things in a different manner than how we were conditioned and raised. It is very important if we wish to produce a better human being or people. Do women really enjoy sex? Again, parental discretion is advised. I'm going to try to be as um, nice, try to stay away from being vulgar and nasty with this subject. I just want to uh, bring up something so that we may think about this. There is no right, there is no wrong, I just want us to think about what I, what I am about to present. No more, no less. Now, let's talk about woman. When we speak about woman or women, you have your mother, grandmother, aunts, nieces, women on the streets, women in the community. We think about and we picture the women of today in the condition that we've always known women to be. May I suggest that womanhood is different than what we see today. What you see today as womanhood is not truly womanhood. It is a human being that has been exploited, degraded, humiliated, used and abused for generations, for centuries by men, not only Caucasian men, but men from all races around the earth. Wherever you find this woman, you will find her under an abusive male. It's very unlikely, and I have not seen any society where the woman is not placed in a servant-like or slave-like condition under the male. And this has caused her from being a human being to some type of slave-like animal. And for men, that's nice. That's nice. In fact, I would say that the woman is after plants and animals. She's the first human slave before black folks or, or whomever, this gender, this gender was enslaved by her male partner, the one that is supposed to, as y'all say, as the one that's supposed to love and protect her, he turns right around and gave him life. Where is all this dust coming from? I'm tripping. <laughs> but, uh, but, uh, the one that gave him life, he turns right around and makes a slave out of her. So the woman that you see is not really the human being that should exist. She is a created being, created from exploitation and abuse for generations and generations. And I believe it was Dr. Lalo O Africa in his book, I should have got that book. But he was talking about of how women, what you call a menstrual cycle, 
is not really a menstrual cycle. It's actually hemorrhaging. It's actual real bleeding every month. A menstrual cycle, if you notice the mammals in the wild, you will see them bleed just a little taste and they go on about their business. This human woman actually bleeds. She really runs with blood. And this is unnatural. According to this brother, Lalo O Africa, who studies nature. And he gave an example of where animals in the wild, they have their little administration thing, and it's really a little of nothing. But when you domesticate, when these animals are put under abuse, when they are put in captivity, then all of a sudden it changes and they actually bleed. He makes a comparison to women outside of Western civilization, outside of the abuse of men. I forgot what kind of women these were, somewhere up in some mountain somewhere, I guess, I would believe. They don't have these type of periods. Mm. I want to greet Kendrick uh, Wright in the chat room real quick. Thank you, Kendrick, for being here with me. But they don't have that. So something is wrong. Something is wrong. When you look at soul brothers and sisters, when you look at us, we are an unnatural people. This is not how we're supposed to be. We are a product of chattel slavery. That's what we are. We are not real. This is not how we're, this is not, we are not natural. And so the woman who also, this gender all over the earth, they are behaving and are acting in an unnatural manner because they've been under abuse for thousands and thousands of years. And then we turn right around as men because we don't know no better and we treat her our females the same exact way. And the only way she can come back into her own, we have to change that process. There are many brothers now. You treat the sisters and you are sensitive. But sensitivity is not enough to change the condition. Being nice to Terry, <laughs> you know, I like Terry. That's not enough. Opening, opening the car door for Terry is not enough. It takes the reverse of what generations and thousands of years have done in order to bring that woman back to her real self. And we really don't know what that is. We have not seen it, nor can we comprehend. So I'm going to present something to us to try to get us to sort of look at women in a whole total different manner. And the whole total different manner is the fact that we refuse to see, we as males refuse to see the woman as a human being. Number one problem. I don't care how nice you treat her in, some, in the mosque or the synagogue and some of these religious places, we treat our women good. Not good enough. Because you're still not treating her like a human being. She's still in that subservient type of condition. And she should not be that. She should be leading the household, not you. It is unnatural. You do not see that in nature where males are leading the household in mammals. You don't see that. It's always been matriarchal. And there's a reason for that. But we can't comprehend and we don't understand that because we've taken this, these sisters out of her nature. And she reflects her dumbass man, these corrupt men. Let's, we're going to talk about this. You don't see her really as a human being like yourself. You think that you're better because you have a penis but you're not. 
We are all human beings and we all have our own role in this life, but we are out of our roles. We're, leaving, we're living an, an unnatural type of existence. And if we study nature, you can easily see that. But for a man, it's beneficial and you like being in this position. So why are you angry at racists when they enjoy being a racist? They enjoy pink supremacy. They like being on top. So why are you going to get angry at them? Because they kick you on the bottom. It's a benefit. They like it. Just like you like being the man of the house. I'm the king of the house. I run things. I'm a man. Same thing. No difference. You like, you like her to submit to you even if you are ignorant and a damn fool. And she's been programmed and conditioned no matter, as long as this human has a penis, she's supposed to submit. She has been conditioned to believe that you're some type of leader. And what type of leadership has this man done for the human being on the earth? Countless wars, the wars are never ending, poisoning the earth, destroying the planet, rape, murder, thievery, lies, deceit. That's what men have done. And there's no evidence that I know of in history where under the control or under the leadership of men, you find nothing different. You don't find peace and joy and happiness because if that was the case, she would be different today. So Steve Harvey has a book. I think it's called uh, Act Like a Lady, Think Like a Man. I would suggest to all you women out there, do not think like a man. These men are screwed up. Believe that. And you need to question and you need to be careful and you should stop following them. You see the type of world under their control that has been built. Why would you want to continue to support that? Because you have become their slave. That's why you have become their slave. And a slave exists only for the benefit of his or her masa. So you submit to their will. Plus, you know, they are bigger and stronger and they'll kick your ass. So it's going to take men who know better to challenge other men, just like it take, it's going to take pink people to put other pink people in check. Because other pink people are not going to listen to a Negro. They don't care about me crying and complaining and reparations and so forth. Oh, the police are killing us. But when other Caucasian people begin to speak out, they have no choice but to listen. So when another, another man, when men stand up in defense and to put this woman back where she belongs, to put her, begin the process of putting this woman back, to give her her nature back, it's going to take brothers like that and men like that to get the process started to challenge men. Because a woman can't do it. But that's our job. That's our job is to protect and defend and uplift our woman. In nature, there is no, there is no gender more important, not better, but she's important because she has been given the duty of being the life giver. And so males in nature would die to get with her. She is important because without her, there is no more. That's the end. Well, you say, well, if it's not for the male, she couldn't have babies or whatever. Who is doing all the damn work? She's the one carrying this life for nine months. You ain't doing nothing. She's the one with the breast able to feed the life once it comes into, the, into, into existence. And she nurtures and she clean the diapers and she do all this work and she mess with your late ragged ass and all this. And you think that you equal to her? Are you crazy, man? No, you're not equal. And you are happy to make that baby. Matter of fact, some of y'all get upset because you want to make a baby 
and she re she rejects you. And you all upset. Oh, women do this and women do that. And you, you get all upset because you because you want to help make the baby. So let's get off. We need to stop all this crazy stuff. We need to understand her. We need to understand the woman. We're going to try to do that. You know, I thought I could do this in 20 minutes. And I changed my mind because I think it's going to take a little bit longer than 20 minutes. So I said, well, might as well do it live. I'm tired. Y'all know I'm tired all the time, but uh, we're going to get this job done. I want you to understand something. And I want you to jot down your comments. Ain't too much you're going to be able to say. But again, something to think about. Something to think about. No more, no less. There is no absolutes. But I want to bring us something about her. I'm talking to the men here. Also the sisters too. Because some of y'all sisters, y'all going to bear witness to what I'm going to say as we go along, as we get further into this, into this discussion. So this woman that we're seeing on the street, your mother, your sisters, the women out in the street, they are not who they really should be. That is not no more than we who are soul people, the descendants of slaves born in America, this is not us. We have become and made unnatural. We are an unnatural product. And she as a gender is an unnatural product. So don't blame her for her attitude. Don't blame her for who and what she become. She didn't make her. Your brothers, other men caused this. Because other men don't view her as a human being. Many times, she's just something to play with, to make more men. So you'll make more men with this woman, and then these same guys will go sleep with a man. That's all she is. Somebody to make babies with and um, clean the house, a servant. And then some of these fellas back in the day, and even in modern times, <laughs> I heard, <laughs> they go find a man to sleep with. That's what they really want. Thus, the word boyfriend, chasing boys, booty chasers. Oh, wow. And you wonder why this woman is all messed up because the men are chasing another man's booty when he should be chasing her but he's using her as a slave wow mm. okay do women really enjoy sex again parental discussion is advised and uh i just want to present something to us to make us think this is the think channel i don't know what they do on other channels this is the think channel. I want us to think. I want us to. I want us to look at other possibilities. I want us to. I want our thinking process to be different, unorthodox, out of the box, outside of this other these teachings and stuff that we clog our brain up with. That's why you can't see her as she really is, and she can't see herself who and what she really is and what she should be. Look, do women really enjoy sex? Enjoy. Let us remember this definition. I wrote it down here. Very simple definition. Enjoy. Take delight or pleasure. Mm. Benefit from. So she should have, she should find delight and she should find pleasure in sex. 
she should also benefit from sex. Okay. Now, of course, many sisters will, they will say, well, you know, I, <laughs> I'm so, I'm so embarrassed, but I do like sex. <laughs> I do enjoy. I don't know what you're talking about, brother. My husband and us, we, we do our thing and the sex is good, I must say. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Terry, cover your ears. <laughs> Take delight or pleasure. Benefit from. Well, there are crackheads who say they enjoy crack. There are drunks who say they enjoy being drunk. There are alcoholics who say they love, you know, whatever. All these different addictions or whatever, they say they actually enjoy. There are some people who say when they have sex, they like to get beat with a whip and stuff like that. Take delight or pleasure, benefit from. What is the benefit of being a crackhead? What is the benefit of being a drunk or a dope fiend? What is the benefit when you are talking about you're having sex and somebody's whipping you with a whip? What is the, what is the benefit? Is this, is this real benefit or is it condition? Do you make yourself feel as though you enjoy and it's a pleasure? i tell you something about my mother. My mother started off as a beer drinker. That's all she was. She liked to drink beer. But she wanted to join the big boys. And the big boys was drinking hard whiskey, hard vodka. So my mother, wanting to be with the big boys, she conditioned herself to enjoy and find delight and pleasure in drinking whiskey and vodka by taking those drinks. And I saw her with my own eyes. She sat there with whiskey and vodka and just kept messing with it and just kept messing with it until she conditioned herself to like it. She did not really enjoy it. She wanted to just be with the big boys. So she was doing it not for her, woo! She was not doing it for her own satisfaction, for her own delight or pleasure, or her own benefit. She was doing it for the benefit and the pleasure of other people she wanted to be around because they was drinking hard whiskey and vodka. She conditioned herself. And so I'm saying to you, that what you think that these women enjoy, and even if they really bother themselves, are you really enjoying sex because it's for you, or are you doing it because you've been conditioned to satisfy this man? Because this is how you've been conditioned the way you're supposed to behave in this society. Is it really beneficial for you? Because if it was really, woo, if it was really beneficial to you, then why so many of these women are having fake orgasms? Why are you faking the funk? Why are you laying in the bed with this man and you pretending that you are enjoying yourself? And some of you just go through the motion. Oh, oh, Johnny. Ooh, oh, that's it, Johnny. Oh, y'all know how you do it. And you faking it all because you're not really into it that that much. You're not you're not taking delight. You're not really getting pleasure. You're just acting out something that you're supposed to do because this is your husband. This is your boyfriend. Is it something that you really want to do? Mind you now, don't feel bad about this orgasm crap. The man or the male has a prostate gland. That's why he's able or we're able to have this orgasm thing, ejaculation. A woman has a primitive prostate gland, but it don't work. 
Now, what you call an orgasm is two things. A woman has, uh, she, she can lubricate herself during the sexual uh, experience. And some women really lubricate. And you can feel that and you call it an orgasm. Or, as a recent study showed, what you think is an orgasm is really you're urinating. Because the human being, I know many of you, 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 you say it can't be no, no damn urine boy. Get out of here with that stuff. No, look, look. People's bodies respond differently. I'm pretty sure you use the bathroom before you get involved in sex or whatever. But the body is always, always making urine. So the bladder is right there in the same area with your, with the, with your sexual crap going on. And if you stimulate the bladder enough, it'll, let, it'll release the urine. And so the average person, if you urinate before the sexual act, chances are that's why you have a problem with orgasm. You're not producing a lot of lubrication. There's nothing wrong with that. What is wrong is that many of you are not, you're faking the funk and you know you're faking the funk because you've been, con you've been conditioned to behave and act a certain way, just like the so-called Negro in America. So it's not an orgasm, it's urine. Let me explain something to you. You listening? Okay. For those of you who are listening and for those of you who will listen in the future, come on now. Let's, let's go down this, this, this uh, yellow brick road, but we're not going to see the eyes. <laughs> now listen to me here. Come Follow me. Terry, you with me? Okay, she's with me. <clears throat> okay. Look. The woman, sisters, you, you, you have a vagina, okay? You would think that it's natural for the penis and the vagina to intercourse. True. Without this activity, I would not be here, you would not be here, and so forth. Cool. It's natural. However, don't you know the sperm itself, as it enters your womb, your body attacks it. The sperm is a foreign object in the woman's body, and, your, and the woman's body attacks the sperm. That's why you have to produce so many so they can, you know, duck and dodge and somebody can get through because the woman's body attacks the sperm. Don't you think that your body also views, oh, I know y'all never thought about this. Don't you think your body also views the penis as a foreign object? And if the sperm Shoe Show is celebrating 50 years in business with a huge warehouse sale. This weekend and this weekend only save big on all of the top brands that you and your family want to wear. Nike, Skechers, Reebok, Timberland, New Balance, and more all of the top brands, all of the popular styles, and over 60,000 pairs to choose from. 
So listen, if you wear shoes, then you must be at the Shoe Show Warehouse Sale this weekend. Take I-85 to exit 55 and then follow the signs and go online at shoeshow.com. I'm the glad Shoe I don't this Shoe Show no weekend only. I hate you, Shoe Show. I hate you, Shoe Show. I should do. I'm going to get in my car and make a bad video about Shoe Show. There we go. I don't have a lot to say. Come to see Terry. That's Terry, Cindy, Jerome. We can talk. I don't know why people don't like talking to me. I don't. I don't bite. I don't think. Terry Ellis will tell you I don't bite. You know. So anyway.
Now, you can put your own hand in your mouth and you really don't like it because you know your hand is not supposed to be in your mouth like that. It feels funny in your mouth and you don't like it because it's foreign. You understand what I'm saying? It's foreign. You reject it. So why wouldn't, so why wouldn't, so why shouldn't the penis be rejected because it's a foreign, foreign object? Putting your finger in your anus is a funny feeling and you don't like it because it's a foreign object. See, this is what we must understand. This is the woman's body. This is your body. And you just don't, you just don't want nothing. You have an object that's actually entering the woman's body. And she's supposed to say, oh, that feel good. I like that. This is actually entering her body, her orifice. And she's supposed to like that. But here you are, you really don't like, you really don't like the, your hand in your mouth or finger up your butt. But for some reason, you're supposed to get all this pleasure out of a penis. Because you've been conditioned that way. Mm. Look. I've studied a lot of animal, animals when they are during their, their, their sexual escapades. And I watched, and I watched the females. I watched the females, especially mammals, because mammals can actually show facial expression. And I see a deer get on top of another deer. I see an elephant get on top of a Elephants and lying on top of the females don't look like they are experiencing delight or pleasure. Don't seem like it to me. I seen a female lion turn around and try to bite the male lion. Like, hurry up and get her off of me. You have something of a foreign nature entering, actually entering your body. That's the problem. But the the female human being, you have been conditioned to believe and they tell you it's your duty to allow this to happen to you. And you're not respected. Your humanity is actually being violated. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Your humanity is actually being violated. The male don't give a damn about your humanity. Men refuse to look at you as a human being. Just to show you how hypocritical these men are, ask, ask them about a prostate exam. The guy, the guy or the woman puts on, on a pair of gloves and they feel up in your anus for your prostate. They don't like that. Many men don't like a, a prostate exam because you take a foreign object, these fingers, and you probe around in your backside. Now they don't like that. But for some reason, the woman is supposed to like that. Why are you supposed to like that? But it's not good enough for him. Matter of fact, the prostate exam could catch prostate cancer in his early stages so that he can be treated so that he can have a better life. Mm. There's a benefit, even though he's not, he, he's not experiencing delight or pleasure. Well, some of these guys might <laughs> nowadays. <laughs> but
But uh, there's a benefit from this. There's a benefit from this trying to find the prostate cancer, but the fingers is a foreign object and the men don't like it. But for some reason, the penis and whatever up in your vagina or in your backside, you're supposed to enjoy all this. Not him. The woman, you're supposed to enjoy all this. Something is wrong. And for some reason, you enjoy. Why do you enjoy? Or you think you enjoy. You really don't enjoy. That's why your body is not really responding. Because there's no real benefit. You've been conditioned. You've been conditioned to think this way. I want the man, I want the male to put yourself in the woman's position. Can you imagine somebody on you and humping on you like that? For real. I mean, just imagine, imagine that happening to you. You won't, you don't like that. But she's been conditioned to accept that. And of course, it's got, I mean, it has, it's natural, but yet at, at the same time, we're looking at it in a whole wacky type of manner because because we are seeking this pleasure thing. We are seeking, we, we've, been, we've been conditioned to seek pleasure and enjoy and like children looking for candy. In nature, most of the times, these sexual copulations only last a few seconds, a few minutes. It, it goes boom, 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 and it's over. But we have been conditioned to take it further because we have been put in a slave-like condition because everything, our humanity really has been taken away from us so we can only find relief and joy in our genital area. So here, many of you talk about, man, I, I could do it for, for four, five, six hours, and I could do it for days and days and days. That's crazy. You know why? Because you don't have nothing else better to do except go to take your ass to work, get drunk, do some drugs, and the other foolishness your slave master allow you to, to do. That's why. That's why you act and behave the way that you do. You don't have nothing else to do. Your master won't allow you to seek greater, greater potential in your human self. But even so, and she is, is told in religion that this is her duty. This is mandatory. So she can be a married woman and you take your vows <laughs> you take your vows and they tell the woman it's your duty remember at one time a man if he raped his wife he could not be charged with rape because that's her duty so no matter how you feel that's your duty you're supposed to lay down and let somebody just be humping on you with this foreign object that you really don't like and a lot of women will will express that. I'm not. And a lot of women, they hold that inside because that's what they want to express. But they can't because they feel they will be made mockery of something wrong with you. There is nothing wrong with you. What, hey, somebody humping up. Come on. Ask these men. And I'm put in the chat section, all these men, how would you like somebody humping on you like that? Put in some foreign object. Now, you know, nowadays, they got these uh, these plastic things. I can guarantee you, these men are not allowing these plastic things to go up and out of them like that. The woman can take one of these old fake plastic things, wrap it around them, and they can be the man. I bet many men ain't going for that. But it's good for her. It's good for her to have a foreign object humping on her like that, but, but men don't want that. See, see, Hypocr hypocrites, fake. I don't see why, no. Hmm. You don't want to change in this world? 
This is why women cannot, you cannot come into your full potential. You don't even know who you really are. Just like soul brothers and sisters in America, we don't really know our potential. We really don't know what we can do, what we're about, because we are in an, in an exploitive type position, oppressed position. You don't want nobody humping on you like that. Get out of here. You shouldn't have no problem with a prostate exam. You don't want nobody probing on you like that. Of course, a lot of guys are getting upset. But a lot of sisters probably can relate because you know. And then look at this. Okay. So women tolerate this. They tolerate this humiliation, this degradation for these few minutes so they can bring life to the planet because they do love their man. They love their husbands and boyfriends or whatever. And they tolerate that. And how, how is she repaid? You cheat on her. Yeah, you cheat on her. You lie to her. You smack her around and beat her up. That's what you do. You treat her like a damn slave. That's how you repay her. You repay her with all of this and she bear your children, carry this baby in her. In, in her for nine months. And this is how she's repaid all over the earth. She's the life giver. She's the, she's the one that bear all of this humiliation to keep this species going. And this is how she is treated. Mm, wow. Wow. I, it's, it's just amazing to me. Act like a lady, think like a man. No, sisters, don't do that. What the brothers and men around this earth need to do is act like a man and think like a woman so he can feel your pain. He don't feel your pain. Even, even the sensitive one because they want to hump too. And when you see him doing his humping, he goes off into a whole brand new world, has no feelings or nothing, just, you, you know what guys be doing? Just out there. Out there in La La Land somewhere. But that's good for him. He does not have to, he's not suffering any humiliation. He's the one that's causing it. And don't give a damn about his, his human partner. You, woman, you are a human being. And this is, this is the key here. We are overlooking the fact that a woman is a human being. And until these men treat you right, this world will never get right. Never. Everything is out of balance. See, a woman is a life giver. Men are not life givers. So they really don't care too much about certain things. They don't mind killing. They don't mind murdering. They don't mind destroying because they don't, they're not life givers. They are takers of life, easy for them. But a woman has that nature and she has that closeness with the universe. She has that closeness to life. So even, look, she has a close, she has that close relationship with the universe that even if her baby is born dead, she treats that baby like that baby is alive until it's just, she just says she just knows that it's, it's it's useless. A man could easily just kick the baby out. Oh, that's dead, and just kick it away. He has no maternal instinct at all. So this is the reason why we live in the condition that we're in right now is because the woman is not in her proper position because a woman will protect life and nurture life and love life, and she don't care 
whether her baby is black or white or have one leg or two legs, one eye or nothing, none of that stuff. I love my baby. Men are the ones tripping. It, it, what color is it? It, it? How tall is the baby? And, and all this other stuff. Men create all this crap. A woman only cares, are you alive? Because if you're alive, I love you. Mm. So this is what men need to understand about womanhood. And I know you, like I said earlier, in the genesis of my talk, you tripping off today's women. I'm not talking about that woman. I'm talking about this woman that is a human being and we have not seen her and she is not being treated like that. It's up to us men who know better, get on board and put her where she belongs. Does this diminish our role? Hell no. I'll follow this woman anywhere. And if she go wrong, I just say, look, look, baby, just look. This is how you look. No, move over here a little bit. No, no, you, you're going into traffic now. Come on, move it. There you go. There you go. I have no problem with that. So with that said, I want, I want us to think about what I presented. And uh, we need to look at women, not only the soul sisters, but all women in a different manner. Because without her, we cannot go no further. And without her, we cannot get any better. Without her, just ain't nothing's happening, period. And the better condition she's in, the better condition we'll be in. You think, you think when we see all these people that's supposed to be geniuses and all of us supposed to have that potential, not just a few, all of us supposed to be like that. All of us are supposed to have that potential, but we're not achieving that because we're tr treating her wrong. We're not putting her where she needs to be. So with that said, I just wanted to put that out there. Like I said, uh, it's not an absolute. I'm just trying to understand the woman. I'm just trying to understand her humanity, because I know she has not been treated like a human being in thousands of thousands of years. With that said, I think I'm getting ready to go ahead and get out of here. Okay, I've got a few people. Well, y'all never let me be by myself. I thought I was going to be by myself tonight. <laughs> I have a uh, D cake in the house. How you doing D cake? And I think it's Eileen Randall. Uh, did I see somebody else? Because I, I don't want to miss miss nobody here. Um, I think I started off with uh, Kendrick. Yeah, started with Kendrick. But, uh, and I know there's some people out there just listening. And uh, if somebody want to, if y'all want to ask a question or write a comment or something, I will address that real quick before I, I split. Oh, uh. Peace and respect you, Eileen Randall. I did. I just mentioned your name. Sure did. Peace, everybody. Oh, they go Mills. Mills, how you doing? At times, some folks, dudes and dudettes, try so hard for another that they can seem smother to the other person. That's true. That's true. I thank you, Eileen, for liking my channel. <laughs> I like it, too. <laughs> you know, I went out and I got my, I got my soul sister's uh, CD, let your cafe, you know, I had to go get Terry and uh, had to go get Terry. Their CD came out yesterday. It was only two copies left. And you know something, when I went through the aisle, I lost it. I, I took it out to take a picture, you know, take a quick video and left it in one of the aisles. So I said, uh, well, I just go back and get the other one. And somebody had already got it. I'm like, damn, I done lost my... I done lost my, I done lost my Terry. But uh, yeah, so Electric Cafe, go out and get it. 
real nice. Uh, I haven't I haven't listened to the CD yet. I will, of course, later. But uh, from what I've heard, it's it's very nice. You don't have to worry about profanity and vulgarity. Uh, the Soul Sisters keep it very classy, like they've always done. And uh, yeah, so um, yeah, you know, Terry is my is my favorite. Uh, so with that said, y'all, I guess. Everybody just wanted to give me greetings and uh, peace and respect to everybody. And uh, <laughs> okay, D Cake says, uh, "Why do you think unnatural? <laughs> are you serious? <laughs> why do you think unnatural things are bad? I mean, if it's unnatural, I mean, why? I mean, it's easier, you know, it's easier to do things when they are natural to you." That's right. Most things that we use and do today are unnatural. That's right. Don't you know even drinking a soda is unnatural? You are actually putting carbon dioxide. Your body is trying to get rid of carbon dioxide and you drinking the stuff. Cell phones are unnatural. You're right. That's right. Cars, they poison the environment. Planes, that's right. Everything we basically do is unnatural. However, this does not mean we cannot use technology. We can have those same type of technology as long as they don't produce these gases and these things that's detrimental to us. Well, see, this is another thing. When it comes to, when it comes to uh, certain events or whatever, now, the poisoning of the environment is what makes things bad as far as planes and cars and things of this nature. However, if you can produce that vehicle and it does not produce these poison that's bad for the environment and dest destructive, beneficial, right, absolutely, that's beneficial, then, you know, we as human beings, we're not, we're not animals. We have the brains to create all these different things. However, in the, the current world that we're living in, the men that control don't give a damn that they are destroying the environment. The only thing they care about is, I'm getting rich. I'm getting rich. I'm getting rich. And I think that would be my subject tomorrow, hopefully, as they say in religion, if I'm blessed to see tomorrow. I want to talk about materialism. Because we are so materialistic. I, it's just incredible. But that's what it's all about. I, I'm rich. I want to be powerful. You want to be, they want to enslave other people. I want to be better. I want to be better than D Cake. I want to be better than Eileen. I want, I want to be better. It's all about being better and greater and powerful over others. And when it's all said and done, it don't mean nothing. Because when it's all said and done, you're going to go into the ground. You ain't going to take none of it with you. Who was that guy with Microsoft? No. Steve Jolly with him? Did these people with all this money and fame and fortune, Michael Jackson, my favorite entertainer, he did not take none of this stuff with him. Or Prince? It don't mean nothing. What, what means something to me is my relationship with DK and Eileen and Mills, other human beings. That's what's important to me. I don't care nothing about these cars and these houses and all this bull crap things that don't really mean nothing. Yeah, Steve Joe Jobs or whatever his name was. <laughs> Ray Brown said, well, yeah, you enjoy it while you're alive. How do you really enjoy it? How can you really enjoy having more than what you can use in nature? Animals and plants only use what they need. How are you? How do you really enjoy having six houses? You can only live in one at a time. It don't make no sense. It's greed. And a lot of these people are Christians, and the Bible teaches against greed. Being rich and wealthy is a sign of greed. You got more than what you need. What's, it don't make no sense to me. It don't make any sense. How do you really enjoy that? How do you really enjoy being lazy? I can cut my own grass. I 
can cut my own grass. What I need somebody to, to cut my grass for me. But I'm so rich, I want everybody to serve me and cook for me and do all these different things. Ah, I'm not into that. That's a slave uh, mentality, a slave master mentality. It's a word for it. I, uh, I, there's a word for it when you got people who believe they should be served all their life. It's not a slave master, it's not slave owner, but it's people who just believe that they think that they should be served all their life. That's why the forefathers of this nation practice slavery, because they believe they should be served all their life. Drive fast car, wear nice clothes. And have... There's nothing wrong with having decent things in your life. But when you make these things more valuable than life itself, there's a problem. There's a problem. When you think a car is more valuable than that orphan, you think that car is more valuable than the homeless person on the street, you have a problem. When you think things that are not alive is more important than life, there's a problem. This is why we are in the condition we are in, in as far as human beings. Then you say, well, we inherit it out to our children. I mean, okay, so you you passing down the stuff, these things to the children, and a lot of these children get it and mess it up, and they don't they don't respect what you talk about anyway. Nobody owns nothing. They inherit it until somebody takes it away from them. So they never, you never own nothing. You only own stuff or things as long as somebody can't take it away from you. So, I mean, but see, if you don't trip off things like that, it don't make no, I mean, you don't make no difference. Ray Brown is really materialistic. So I can't, you know, Ray Brown don't, is materialistic. They, <laughs> they love things. That's our problem. We love things. I've never been like that. You know, the only thing I, I ever wanted of a material thing, really, I wanted a real gold watch. I might, I might get me a gold watch, but I really, I'm not even interested in a gold watch no more because now we have cell phones and watches, you know, whatever. And I, you know, so there's no need really for a gold watch. People, I care about people than these material things because a car can't cry for me. A house can't cry for me. When you're in the hospital, your car is not going to go see you in the hospital. Your house is not going to go see you in the nursing home. The value, what is most valuable is what we reject, and that is other human beings. We get angry at our mother and sisters and cousins for, for silly reasons. They are more important than anything you should have in your life is another human being. That's why we suffer. That's why we are in the condition as human beings like we do. That's why you have people in nursing homes don't have nobody to, to care for them and see, see about their welfare. You got the homeless. There should be no homeless people on the street. There shouldn't be these all these uh, older people that don't have nobody in these nursing homes because nobody cares. We, don't, we care about things and we're selfish. Mm. There's nothing wrong with living decently. But when we get overboard and become obsessed, when we think that these things give us value, a car don't give me value. If, if I asked Terry Ellis on a date and I showed up in my 1984 uh, LeBurn, if she thinks that's beyond her, oh, I, I couldn't do that. Bye. That's all I can say is bye. Because that don't make me. I'm not that. I'm not something that don't give me value. A pretty car is not going to give me value. Money and fame, all that don't mean nothing to me at all. Never have. There's nothing wrong. There's nothing better 
there's nothing better than having good human company. There's nothing better than having a real good friend, a human being that you can trust, that you can uh, have a good conversation with, somebody that you can have fun with. That's better than any car. A husband that won't cheat on you. A wife that don't mind cooking you a meal because you're a good husband. And children that love their parents. Ain't nothing better than those things. But we work real hard for cars and houses, but we won't work hard to produce better human beings. And you wonder why your world is all screwed up? <laughs> wow. Mm. Well, Ray, I mean, you in your own world. You know, Ray, Ray is in the world. He don't care about wives or children or nothing. Like, well, that's, I mean, that's good. That's good for you, Ray. But it's not good for humanity. And we are living, we are living in the consequence of those who are materialistic. Constant wars, hate, rape, and murder, thievery, and the list goes on and on. Because, because of materialism, fighting for stuff, stuff that you really would never, never own. You would never own it. Because somebody can come who's stronger than you, and they'll just take it away from you. So what? See, that's the thing. We need, to, we need to create something new outside of these class systems. That's why I was talking about in a video about the study the ants and the bees. Study the ants and the bees. You see how they work. There's nobody better than the other. How the labor is, how the labor is, is uh, uh, you know, shared among the, the insects. We can do the same thing because we're smarter, I thought. You're not smarter? Oh, well. And so you can't, you know, since we're so materialistic and so selfish and greedy, we can't comprehend what bees and ants do. But I can, and I don't mind. Huh. No, Ray says that uh, he can't hold down a girlfriend because he has a high sex drive. You know, sir, uh, that's unnatural. That's unnatural. It's unnatural because there's no such thing as a high sex drive. How do you how do you have a high sex drive? That don't even make any sense to me. What do you mean? No, you condition yourself to be like that because we're slaves. So we concentrate on our genitalia. That's the reason why you like that. And you get obsessed with pornography and all this other crap because those who are ruling the earth keep conditioning your mind like that. No, no, no. That's right. The Holy Quran says that the devil will come at you from all kinds of ways. So the devil comes to us through sex because it is natural and made it unnatural for you. And now you're a freak. You become a freak. You're a freak. We become freaks. What is a freak? A freak is that which is unnatural, that which is outside of nature. They call it a freak. Anything that has an abnormality outside of the of what we're used to, they call us that call it a freak, freak of nature. But you know, we all we all learn on our different levels. So I'm not going to entertain that no more. But uh, yeah, if there's no further comments, I was this was a, like a sexual type talk. So I had to entertain Ray <laughs> for, for a few minutes because he's Ray is starting to get a little bit out there. I, I, I don't I can't go there. 
But uh, yeah, to uh, to all those who are listening, thank you for joining me, and to all those who are who join me in the uh, chat room. I thought, like I say, I thought I was gonna be here by myself, and y'all came to give me a little uh, company. I really appreciate it, and I hope that I've said something to uh, make us think a little bit. There is no absolute, but we do need to, we do need to begin to look at womanhood more so, so that we can look at her as a human being. Because right now, I don't, there's men, we're not conditioned to look at womanhood or women as a human being, but look at, but basically as some type of tool, something to use and throw away, almost like toilet paper. That's a damn shame. But that's how it's been for thousands of years. This is what she has suffered. Well, Terry, you marry me, Terry, you don't have to worry about it. I'll put you where you where you belong. Peace to you, D-Cake. Peace to Arlene. Peace to everybody in the chat room. Peace to those who are just watching and listening. And uh, hopefully tomorrow, if I feel like it, I'll talk about materialism, this material crap that we've uh, we become a uh, victim to, maybe a little bit, uh, do it live. And uh, yeah, so as Don Cornelius always say, in parting, Don always said, until next time, I wish us love, peace, and soul. Ha, <laughs>